Welcome back to Armor Unboxed. For those of you who missed it, last week I reviewed the Power Color RX 5700 Red Devil. That's the non XT version. I did the XT version about two weeks before that. Anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Basically, I was just letting you guys know that I looked at that card. That was the first AIB 5700 that I reviewed, but it was a bit pricey. $390 US is really too much for a, a vanilla 5700. And yeah, basically that makes it priced very closely to the entry level 5700 XTs. So yeah, bit of a tough sell that one. Still, many of you pointed out in that video in the comment section that it probably would be worth the asking price if I had flashed it with a 5700 XT BIOS as that apparently gives you XT like performance while saving you $50, at least when compared to the equivalent 5700 XT Red Devil graphics card. So I thought we'd flash a 5700 to a 5700 XT BIOS and look at how that performs and what some of the advantages or disadvantages doing that might be. But before we get too far into it, I think I'll just have a, a few sips of my coffee here out of my new official Harbour Unboxed mug. Hmm. That's still a bit hot actually. Might leave that sitting a bit longer. But yeah, if you'd also like to get your hands on an official Harbour Unboxed mug, then you can follow the link over to our merch store and buy one. They're pretty, uh, pretty snazzy. Good for long benchmark sessions if you need some coffee or whatever else you drink out of your mug. Anyway, that's probably enough about the mug. <laughs> Let's get back to the actual video. So, as I said, recently reviewed the Red Devil 5700, but for this video, I thought we could use something that's a bit more affordable. So I've got the XFX. It's not the thick two. It looks a bit like it. it's missing the chrome, but this is the DD Ultra. So whatever that means but it is a much cheaper 5700. So it's only a $20, uh, $20 over the MSRP rather. It's not a $20 graphics card, that'd be pretty good. Uh, but yeah, $370 US for this particular model. And the cool thing about this card, and one of the reasons why I picked it, is because it has the exact same cooler from the Thick 2. Now I realize that the XFX 5700 XT Thick 2 has been given a bit of a hard time recently, but honestly, I don't think it's all that bad. It's certainly not the best 5700 XT going around, and at $450 US, it's my opinion that XFX need to be a lot more competitive on pricing, especially given the Sapphire Nitro Plus and Power Color Red Devil both feature a $440 US MSRP, while MSI's Gaming X comes in at the same $450 US. And I don't think it's unreasonable to suggest that XFX dropped the price down to $420 for the non-Ultra variant and $430 for the Ultra version, given that the RX 5700 DD Ultra that we have here is just $20 over the MSRP and features the exact same cooler as the Thick 2 Ultra. And one of the reasons why I picked this model as our guinea pig for this BIOS flash test is that it's a 5700 with a 5700 XT cooler. Again, not the best 5700 XT cooler, but it works well enough, at least in my opinion. It's also the exact same PCB, and the only change here has been made to the VRM. A single phase has been removed. For those of you who would like to see the design in a lot more detail than I'm going to show in this video, then please check out my review of the Thick 2 Ultra. As I said, same cooler, basically the same PCB. For this one, we're just going to quickly look at the stock out of the box performance, and then we'll get tinkering. Okay, so stock the XFX RX 5700 DD Ultra peaked at just 65 degrees in a 21 degree room after an hour long loop running F1 2019. And that's really not a bad result. The Red Devil peaked at the same temperature, though its fans spun at just 1200 RPM, whereas the DD Ultra had to spin its fans at 1800 RPM. So again, not as good, but not horrible either. The memory peaked at 76 degrees while the VRM hit just 67 degrees and both are solid results. So in its stock out of the box configuration, the 5700 consumed on average roughly 170 watts. The problem though with these factory overclocked 5700 graphics cards is that you can't really manually overclock them any further as AMD has locked down overclocking. Now, you can circumvent these limits using soft power play tables, and I have messed around with this about a month or so ago. The problem with this method is it uses a Windows registry modification, and you have to uninstall it before every driver update, then reinstall it and reconfigure. It's really just a massive pain in the backside, and I've also had it break after a few updates. A far better method for 5700 owners who are keen on extracting the maximum performance from their card is to flash the BIOS. 
overriding it with a 5700 XT BIOS. In this particular case, I downloaded the Thick2 Ultra BIOS and flashed it to the 5700DD Ultra. Using ATI Flash and a custom batch file with a few command lines, you can quickly and easily increase the operating frequency of any 5700 graphics card using this method. And this isn't a guide on how to do it, but there are endless guides on how to flash Radeon graphics cards. So if you want to do that, then feel free to do some Google searching of your own. Anyway, in this instance, I was able to go from an average operating frequency of 1810 megahertz up to around 1920 megahertz once the XT BIOS was installed, and that's a 6% frequency bump. However, now we have the XT overclocking limit, so I was able to push the GPU up to around two gigahertz, and that means we're now boosting the frequency by around 10%. It's also possible to overclock the memory, but since your mileage may vary quite a bit here, I went with an easily achievable 900 megahertz. Okay, so out of the box, the XFX 5700 basically matched the 5700 Red Devil, just a single frame in it, and as you can see, overclocking the Red Devil unlocked just a single extra frame. So 5700 overclocking without flashing or registry modifications is rather pointless. Now, once flashed, the XFX 5700 averaged 70 FPS, and that's a 13% increase in performance and a 15% increase to the 1% low performance. Manually overclocking the flashed 5700 only gained us an extra frame, but we are at stock 5700 XT Red Devil levels of performance now. Gains in Forza Horizon 4 were also quite impressive. Here the flashed 5700 enjoyed a 9% performance boost, and we got a further 2% from a manual overclock. This time we're basically matching the stock 5700 XT. Then in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we see just a 7% boost to the average frame rate once the 5700 is flashed. This time we squeezed 3% more performance out of the manual overclock, and this allowed the XFX 5700 to deliver stock 5700 XT performance, so pretty impressive stuff overall. Naturally, flashing the BIOS to unlock more frequency does come at a power cost, and here we're looking at a 28% increase in power consumption for around a 10% gain on average. However, I should just note that using an AMD reference BIOS should improve efficiency here, but this is what we got when using the Thick2 Ultra BIOS. We also see a rather hefty 28% increase in total system draw, taking total consumption from 316 watts up to 405 watts. Again, results here will vary depending on the BIOS used. Despite the massive increase in power consumption, the operating temperature only increased by 12% to 73 degrees, which is still very reasonable, though the fans were now spinning at 2200 RPM, and we'll look at operating volume in a moment. When compared to the AMD Reference 5700 XT model, the heavily overclocked XFX 5700 performed very well. As for operating volume, the XFX 5700 wasn't exactly a silent card out of the box, but it's not that loud either. Of course, overclocking did increase the volume a little bit, but as you just saw, it had a bigger impact on the operating volume. Depending on your preference, you could spin up the fans for increased noise, but reduced operating temperatures. <sighs> well, there you have it. It's certainly possible to flash a Radeon RX 5700 with an XT BIOS, unlock that extra frequency headroom, and get stock XT light performance. So that's really nice, and I do quite like this method as it is permanent, in the sense that you don't have to change anything after you update Windows drivers, or at least you know display drivers. You don't have to load overclocked profiles every time you boot into Windows or anything like that. There's no messing around. Just flash it, and you're good to go. That said, be aware it's possible the BIOS you use might have issues with your particular model, and that'll require a backup graphics solution to solve, whether that's another graphics card or an integrated GPU, something along those lines. Generally though, I've not had issues flashing graphics cards, but I have heard of people who have had it fail on them. So I guess flash at your own risk. At the end of the day, I'd personally give it a go, but I wouldn't bother messing around with something like power play tables, for example. Anyway, that was a bit of fun, and while the 10% performance boost was mostly free, be aware that the card could use quite a bit more power, and again, depending on the BIOS version you use, as a result, the card could run hotter and louder. And just finally, the XFX RX 5700 DD Ultra worked well in this test. No real complaints, the card worked quite well, as I said. The results were good when flashed with the XT BIOS. Does get a little bit on the hot side, so may not be the absolute best card to get, but the price is quite good at $370. Having said that, I believe the Gigabyte Gaming OC model, the triple fan card, that's about $10 cheaper. That's probably worth looking into. 
But still, the fact that you get the Thick 2 cooler on this much cheaper 5700 uh, makes it a pretty decent option. But of course, just check pricing in your region as we always recommend because what's the best option for you may differ depending on where you are located. Uh, talking of about the Gigabyte card, I just realized I will have the XT version of the Gaming OC in for review next week. So that'll be good. Keep an eye out for that. A lot of you guys have been requesting the Asus Strix card. That will be up, I think, this weekend. So not too long now. We'll have a review on that. Uh, and also I have in the ASRock. What is it? The Tai Chi. So I've got the Tai Chi review coming on the channel, I think, tomorrow, depending on how I go with editing and whatnot. But... Yeah, so if you're interested in that card, you're definitely going to want to watch our review on it. And yeah, hopefully that'll be on the channel tomorrow. But anyway, flashing 5700s to XT BIOSes, yeah, quite effective. Nice performance bump there, good value, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, if you're willing to take the plunge, then it's probably worth doing. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, actually, no, I've got one more thing to talk about. Don't forget our mugs. If you're interested in a mug... Grab one from our merch store. They're pretty awesome. They look really cool. I like the way the uh, the design blends in at the top and bottom. Very neat. Probably can't see that that well. And then the logo looks cool. You can put them in your dishwasher and all that kind of stuff. Really high quality printing. Yeah, it's a mug. So thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time. <sighs> Almost finished my coffee. It's not even cold. I nailed this. Absolutely nailed it. Good stuff.